So in this little video I'm just going to show you about using uh, sort of custom, more custom objects or objects you've downloaded as your custom T markers. Um, obviously in the previous example I used DPR's T marker package which I don't know if I've linked yet but I will do. But anyway so for this case what I've done is uh, there was talk about using this John Deere tractor as a T marker on Deere Run. Now this isn't Deere Run this is a different scene but anyway. So I downloaded that and this is what I was presented with. So we came in here and we had these two models and this tractor type thing um, here. The material was already set, if it wasn't you could come in here and extract materials, set up your material with your texture and um, whatnot. So anyway, once you get to a point where you've got a working model that you can drag into your scene, <coughs> which is a separate video, I'm now going to convert this into a T marker. So first thing to note is it's going to be too big, um, but anyway, we'll do it in the order that you wouldn't necessarily know that. So let's get rid of that here. So let's go to open up our course overrides, and um, actually we will need to drag this in first because we need to turn it into a prefab. So we'll drag our model in, uh, set it to zero zero zero, and then we'll drag it back out. So we've now got a, a prefab rather than an FBX or an OBJ, we've now got a prefab and that's where you want to get to. So we'll just delete these two. So now our prefab or our game object, we can open up our course overrides and we can drag in our tractor into our white T marker and let's preview it and see what it looks like. So, a couple of issues straight off the bat. You can see it's underground uh, and it's too big and possibly facing the wrong way. So, there's a couple of ways you can go about this. If it's not far off, so if you weren't worried about the rotation, it was just the scale and the position, you could um, come into your prefab and you can adjust your scale. I've done this before so I know what it's going to be. And I think it's point 0.2. I'll just show you that one first. So that would adjust our scale. So update our overrides to reflect the change in our prefab. You notice I'm editing in the prefab. Clear and add. You can see we've now got our, our scales better. And then you can raise it on the Y here. And you can get it looking about right. But this, that's not ideal, it's not really the best way to sort of go about it. It will work I believe, um, but adjusting having sort of floating objects and things like that, depending on the game works with transforms, isn't ideal. Ideally what we want here is all this is zeros and the scales of sort of one really. So that requires some blender work, which I know breathes fear into everyone because it did use to me till I got used to it but this is what we're going to do now so we shall um, close this down we'll clear these P's and pins we'll set this back to how it was uh, we'll leave the scale because it doesn't really matter and we'll just drag it in so this is our now our tractor that we've got here so we'll set it to zero 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 because that's where we want to work and then what we'll do is we need to then get this all out to Blender so this object actually has like some children which does actually work fine for this so select them all so you've got the whole tractor selected or all the child objects I've got a weird one in here so select them all and then go file export wavefront obj and then you just want these top four boxes so only selected objects because that's what we've got selected here and then the position rotation and scale no you can't do this just by clicking on the prefab you have to drag it into your hierarchy and set your um, set this to zero 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 and whatnot so you're making like a clean version of it and make sure you select all the objects otherwise if you just selected that it'd be blank obviously so select them all and then export 
and you can see I've done this before so we'll do tractor OBJ new and that's done so now we need to open blender new scene just click off that click on each of these in turn and then just press the delete key get rid of the light so you've got a blank sort of scene then we're going to import our, um, our OBJ put it on the desktop so to track the new import that and you can see this is where we are and you can see why it appears underground currently I clicked on that and obviously then pressed the num log, uh, numpad period to zoom into it and then I've got shift F to fly around. You can see the origin which is this dot in the middle here is sort of halfway up the object which is why it's planting underground and then obviously for the rotation and stuff um, it was planting sort of that way wasn't it so if you wanted to plant the other way we're going to have to rotate it so first thing to fix is the origin so quite simple I'm going to press G to grab it and then up and down in unity is Z or Z and I'm just going to bring it up so it's on the ground now you can see that currently the origin hasn't moved as in the origin is still in the middle of the object there um, whereas we want it where this cursor is which is currently at zero zero you can see you've got X's like forward and backwards Y and Z so all you need to do then go object set origin to 3D cursor and now our origin is right here so now it won't plant on the ground anymore um, you can use the different numpad views to get this sort of lined up how you want so numpad 1 oops you can see it's actually uh, not quite lined up so we can know G Z and we can bring it down a bit more and just get it so it's just perfectly and then uh, numpad 3 you could then line up to be central and then numpad 7 so 1 will give you a ground view 3 will give you that view and 7 will give you that view and you can just sort of get it all lined up based on this origin which is currently where this 3D cursor is so yeah object set origin to 3D cursor I think So there you go, so that's about setting the origin. Now if you want to rotate it to have it face the other way, it's just a simple matter of going R to rotate and then whichever axis you want to rotate on, so in this case we want it on the up and down, so that's the Z axis and then 180, enter and we've now got it rotating the other way. So now in terms of the game, when it plants this model, it will plant it on the ground because that's where our origin is and it'll be facing the other way compared to what we had before so now we can go file export fbx go on the desktop again we'll call this tractor new that's why we had a tractor new before in fact sorry I've missed a step before you do this we also now need to go object apply all transforms and that will lock it all in so you can see when you come onto the item it's now scale 111 all our location and rotations are all zero so yeah don't forget that bit that's a very important bit I should have explained that better so yeah object apply and then all transforms so now that's done now we can export our FBX and we'll go to the desktop Tractor new, and then over here, I always um, I click selected objects because I've got that selected, uh, and I also click this experimental apply transform. I don't know if you need to, but I do. And yep, the rest I leave as is, and we'll expect export that. So 
close that down, open up the Unity, my desktop, uh, I'll retract the new FBX, so I'll just drag this in, that's brought our track the new object in, and you can see it's probably facing the other way, no, it won't have the material, <coughs> but we can just use the material we had from the other one, just drag that on, here, Oh, apply. You can see that sorted out. This material is already set up for the old model, so we just drag it onto the new one. And now drag this tractor new into the scene, set it to zero, zero, zero up here, which will move it to so about here. But you don't need to worry about that. And drag that back to create our prefab. We'll get rid of this tractor. Tractor new. Go back to our T box. And now, when we go into our uh, course override editor, I'll leave the old tractor on the white. I'll bring the tractor new onto the yellow. So, if we preview our white marker, this is what we had before. You can see it was slightly underground. Um, and yeah, generally not right. But now, if we go to, let's clear those, we go to our yellow marker, so it automatically appears perfectly on the ground and facing the direction we want. And so when in game, it will look, we've got the direction of travel, that's what it will look like. Which is pretty cool. So what I'll do is I'll just build it out and I'll show you that to make, just to prove that that's how it comes in. So I'll pause there. Obviously before building, always remember, clear your examples. Because otherwise it'll build them twice. So anyway, um, I'll get rid of this off the white because we don't want that. In fact I'll leave that on the white so you can see the broken ones. So let's uh, pause there and I'll just build this out. Okay, so we've loaded back in. I've loaded onto the black tees. So just looking at our going back into Unity, our course overrides. We had it on the white and the yellow. So let's go into here. So blue. There we are. So you can see, as we expected, and pretty much as our preview showed, our white tees have loaded underground slightly bit big perhaps and in the direction of our travel so let's just preview that and just show it looks the same so this is our white T you see direction of travel and that's exactly how they've loaded so then hopefully when we go to our yellow T we should see them facing the correct way and be correct so yellow's over here And there we have them. Nicely placed, nicely scaled, and facing the direction we wanted. So yeah, there's um I say there's a bit to it and it's it's the joys of 3D modelling really, sorting out your axes and your origins and, and things like that. Unfortunately when you're downloading and buying these sort of assets there's not always a lot of thought put into into that side of things but that's a nice little model really and um yeah will be quite a quite a handy little thing i'll just make sure they show on other tees as we go along yeah so here we on this tee box you see you can see the difference that was all kinds of wrong but the new ones are quite nice if we stick a ball down where they are um, this T box. The scale on that wasn't too bad as it turned out. You get like a this adds a little bit extra to the course and you can see we've got shadows on them. Because they're just game objects. I think they're pretty much touching the ground because we set the origin in the right place. So yeah, that's uh modifying custom objects to become your T markers. Hopefully you find it uh, somewhat useful.
any problems or questions, reach out. <laughs>